Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to try something a little bit different. Uh, today I'm going to attempt to record this video in a single take. Uh, so I'll just be basically standing in front of a microphone and talking. Um, I'll be using some photos that I've taken previously as inspiration. Uh, so this series, which I call One Take, will probably go on for at least the next four weeks. And the reason for that is because I have to homeschool my children. I've got no choice in the matter. Uh, because I'm, I can work from home now, or well, I have to work from home now via Zoom, and my wife has to work, has to study from home. She's a TAFE student. She has to study via Zoom as well. We must keep our children at home. Uh, before we get started, let me just introduce my children. Uh, my daughter, she's four years old and she's currently in prep. Uh, prep is the year before grade one, if you didn't already know. My son, he's eight years old and he's currently in grade three. Uh, just for the purposes of this video, let's call my daughter Charlotte. Uh, the reason being is that she was born at around the same time as Princess Charlotte, and they look fairly similar. And for the sake of convenience, let's call my son George. Uh, here he is in China, uh, posing for the camera. Uh, here's a fortnight's worth of work for both my children. Every uh, two weeks I have to walk into the school or just go into the school and collect all their resources. Now I don't want to take anything away from the teachers here. They've done an incredible job. They've uh, compiled all these packs and tried to make them as easy as possible for, stu uh, for uh, parents to follow. But because just because parents can follow it well doesn't mean students can. I mean it's, more, it's written more towards an adult audience. Uh, my Son, for example, I can probably get him to work fairly independently for five or ten minutes. I can assign him a task and he can work through it by himself. But after about five or ten minutes, he starts asking questions. Either he doesn't know what to do or what do I do next, Dad? Or what does it mean? What does this mean, this question and so on? He just needs that supervision. So throughout a period of about an hour, I have to see him at least ten times. Uh, my daughter, on the other hand, uh, because she's only four years old, she can't read any of the instructions, and even if she could, she probably can't work out what to do with any particular question or whatever. So she needs constant supervision. If I'm not next to her, or my wife isn't next to her, she just won't work. She just doesn't know what to do. Now my wife can only help out so much. I mean, English isn't her first language. And she came, she was raised in a different educational system. She was raised in communist China, and quite frankly, their educational system is a lot different from uh, Australian ones. So even though she can understand the English, she can't figure out what the point of the exercise is, or what, what's the purpose, or what do the teach, what do the students, sorry, what are the students expected to do? So she's not exactly the best help when it comes to this learning pack, and she admits that. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from my wife, but it's very hard for her. Plus she's got all her assignments to do for a TAFE and so on, so she doesn't have much free time. The teachers have tried their best to make it as easy as possible. Uh, they've divided the sessions up into morning, uh, middle and afternoon. So each, my, each of my children each have one of these to show them what they need to do in the morning and so on. Um, well, that's great for me. I mean, that tells me what they need to do, but it's not its not exactly easy for the children to follow, and it's impossible for my daughter to follow. So I have to be there, essentially, to guide them through. Uh, here's an example problem from one of my son's so a grade 3 problem-solving worksheet. Uh, looking at question 7, for example, My little sister is 6. I will be twice her age in 3 years' time. How old am I now? Now I'm a maths tutor, I've been doing maths tutoring for a long time, and this is a little bit ambiguous in my opinion, because we know how old the sister is now, she's six. I will be twice her age in three years' time. Now that question, or that statement, does that mean I'll be twice her current age in three years' time, or I'll be twice, I'll be twice her then age in three years' time? So basically, is it twice six, or is it twice nine? It's debatable, right? So if I can't work it out, then obviously an eight-year-old can't figure it out. So he's got constant questions about almost everything he does. Yeah, so it's a lot of extra work. I mean, with my job that I've got to do as well online, uh, my two children that I have to help, my wife doing studies, which she sometimes she sometimes needs help with because she's studying things like anatomy and so on. Um, it just it's just a nightmare. I've got no free time. Plus, I want to get outside and do exercise, and I have to take the children out to do some exercise and stuff too. There's just no free time at all. On top of all of that, the teachers also have to ring every uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. So my daughter's uh, teacher rings my daughter, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, for about five or ten minutes. 
Unfortunately, my daughter, as you would expect for a four-year-old, doesn't speak at all. She, For the first two weeks, she didn't say a single word. It was a bit of an exercise in uh, proof of life, you know, like the terrorists and the hostage situation. I have to prove that my daughter is actually here. It's an incredibly hard thing to do because she didn't want to say a word. She's just very shy, as most four-year-olds probably are. Uh, but finally, she started saying some stuff, even if it was just hello and goodbye. <laughs> but it was enough to prove to the teacher that she was actually here with us. Uh, my son, on the other hand, he does speak a bit with his teacher, but it's usually limited to a single word uh, answer or yes or no answer. For example, oh, how's work going? Good. Uh, did you have any trouble with the poem? No. Uh, how did you go with this? Good. <laughs> That's pretty much how the conversation goes for five or ten minutes. Um, often I have to speak to the teacher as well just to let them know what's going on and if there are actually any real problems or not, which there usually are. We can't understand a question or we're not sure what technique to use for a particular problem and so on. Uh, the Queensland government have also tried to uh, help, sit, help the situation for parents at home by introducing uh, two hours of learning at home TV every morning. Well, it's not every morning. I think it's uh, Monday, Wednesday and Fridays. Uh, it's good. It's a good concept. I sat down and watched it with my children the other morning, and yeah, it was quite nice. Unfortunately, the uh, Learning at Home TV is on a commercial station, and of course, commercial stations have one goal, don't they? To sell ads. So yes, there were an incredible number of ads. Even my children commented. Uh, my son and daughter were asking me, Dad, why are there so many ads? I mean, there weren't just some ads. There was like five minutes of ads every sort of 15 minutes. Oh, I get it. I mean, the, it's not a charity, is it? This, the commercial channel isn't a charity. They've got their business to run and people to pay and so on. But unfortunately, my children have grown up in the YouTube age. They're used to being able to skip ads after five seconds or just block ads or whatever else, right? They don't have to deal with ads very often, and when they do, it's only for five or ten seconds. So yes, watching five minutes of ads is a real turnoff for them, and they eventually just walked away. They said, "Dad, this is just too. There's just too many ads. I don't want to watch this anymore." <laughs> they quite enjoyed the segments in between. They quite enjoyed the you know get up and dance or exercise or whatever, and they quite enjoyed quite enjoyed the uh, drawing on a piece of paper and so on. But yes, they just couldn't bear the ads. So if anybody from the government is listening, I mean that's a real turnoff, and not just for me, but for the children as well. I'm sorry, my uh, children just woke up, so there's going to be a bit of a noise in the background for the next couple of minutes. Uh, I apologise for that, but there's not much I can do about it. Uh, of course, recently there's been some news articles talking about this very issue. Uh, homeschooling is tough, but parents are doing a fraction of the work that teachers are doing. Yeah, I get it. Teachers are doing an incredible job. They've got lots of resources to plan. They've got to prepare those learning packs. They've got to ring kids at home. They've even got to look after kids who have to go to school. So yeah, they've got a, they've got a tough job, I suppose. But to be fair to parents, so do we. We've been dumped in the situation where we've got to look after our kids every day, all day. And we've got to guide them through their schoolwork as well. That's on top of all the other work that we have to do. Like we've also got jobs to do and my wife's got study to do and so on. We've got to get outside, take the kids for a bike ride and so on. It's a full day and it's taking up most of my free time. Uh, anyway, as I said, over the next four weeks or so, I'll just be making these one-take videos. I kind of have to because I just don't have the free time anymore. Um, hopefully I haven't rambled too much. Uh, if I have, I'm, I apologise. I'm not really used to doing this. I don't normally just speak to a microphone. I usually have a fairly well-planned script. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Cheers! Mm -hmm.